Well, thank you for staying with us. It's still Plus Politics. And we are discussing right now the River State issue and the hullabaloo with the warring factions. You know, there are lots of, dra there are lots of shenanigans and drama within the APC right now. The two factions of the All Progressive Congress in River State, led by the Minister of Transportation, Chibike Amechi, and Senator Magna Sabe on the other side. Now, they are back in the trenches for yet another protracted war over planned congresses. Mm. Well, the fresh crisis brewing in the party stems from the inauguration of a five-man caretaker committee led by Isaac Obobola and the announcement of dates for the conduct of the ward, local government and state elections or congresses in River State by the APC National Working Committee. Now, I have still in the studio, uh, Francis Chilaka is a political analyst. And of course, let's dig into this. This is not the first time I mean, APC in River State was in the news before, during, and after the elections. And here we are again, months down the line, and Magnus Abe versus Amechi still, uh, the street lingo was still on the matter. So why do you think that, I mean, one would think that the elections have come and gone, that the APC would put his house in order, being that the APC lost a lot uh, on... <clears throat> On the on the Rivers front, being that no office, no office whatsoever, yeah. was given to the APC. They couldn't even run on any ticket. And one would have thought that there would have been a, a clean house cleaning or you know whatever it is to salvage the problem. But here we are again talking about a Magna Sabe who's gone to court to say these congresses cannot hold. Um, well, you see, the, the problem in Rivers is not only uh, known for Rivers, it's, it's across the whole nation. Um, you have a situation where um, anybody in government, so long as the governor of that state is not of the party, because we just have this um, annoying arrangement where in every state where you have a governor, he becomes the leader of the party. Mm -hmm. So there is no difference between the party and the governor, which is totally, totally wrong. So what you have playing out in River State is the same thing happening in the Doe State. Well, in the Doe State's case... Um... Yeah, the Adam Soshimoli and Obaseki at war front. Who wants to control the party in the state? And you know that the Congress of every political party determines who is in charge of the party in that state. And that is why, you know, Amechi is at one, for, uh, at, at one end wanting to take over the structure. Magnus wants to take over the structure. So it's, it's, this time around, it's not just about the people anymore. It's about who controls the party in the state. But, you know, as we have had, uh, as we have followed, I have sat down with Magnus Abe in his residence in Abuja, and I've had a one-on-one -on -one with him. And I asked him, because... You and the Minister of Transport were allies. Mm -hmm. And we remember how the breakaway happened. I was in River State when they broke away from the PDP and formed the APC. And so I asked, what exactly is the problem between you and the minister? And he said, I have no problem with the minister. The minister is the one who has a problem with me because I wanted to run for office. But do you think that there's more to this than meets the eye? Other than, you know, a power It's about play. greed. It's about greed. It's about selfishness. And about self-centeredness. It's all about who is going to make more money. It's not about... You see, I keep telling people, when you see politicians fighting, it's not about the people. The people end up becoming collateral damage, yes. But it's not about the people. It's about their own selfish interest. But in, in this case, um, River State, as we all know, and most of the South-South states, are PDP strongholds. And for those who know Iwiki, <laughs> it's going to be a tough one to take that from the PDP, depending on who they hand it over to. So I'm still wondering what power exactly that the APC is tussling for. Yes, they have a good, you know, they, they have strong people, boots on the ground in River State, but... What, ex what power are they really talking about? Because that state is run by a PDP governor. I'll, I'll, I'll take us down memory lane. I remember before the um, election in Imo State, and I remember the former governor, Richard, said something. He said um, that the government had promised to deliver the state 
to him. Now, you see, the thing is, the, the, the thing playing out in River State is like what played out in Imo State. If you check all the governors, all those who have been governors from River State, nobody, I don't think anybody has come from the Ogoni tribe. And it was what played out also in Imo State, because since the creation of Imo State, You've never had somebody from the where is well, I'm busy precisely being a governor. So at the end of the day, so we're here. We're back again talking about this whole marginalization thing, and we're talking about unity. So, if you have a man that is fit for the job, and the people vote for the person, why does he have to come from some place or be feeling like he needs to also be in government to feel like he's part of the, the state? The marginalization. I'm sorry if I, this is insensitive, no, but I'm just no, wondering. I, I, you know, it's good. But the marginalization happening at the national level didn't start from there. It starts from the local government level. When we say we want to restructure Nigeria, it's not just at the federal level. We we'll start from the local government. Local government chairmen need to become accountable to the people. The councillors have to be accountable to the people. A local government chairman should be somebody who is known to the people, who the people have knows his antecedents. They know what he can do. They know he can deliver. So when you have that kind of thing in place, all this quarrel will not be there. But because the politicians believe that it's all about money that we give to the people to gain power. So for them, it's about money. It's an investment. I'm more interested in, if you are an opposition who has nothing whatsoever, the local governments were sacked. It's recently, um, Governor Wiki was trying to call them to have a conversation with them. I don't know how that has gone so far. But if the APC intends to take over River State for the, for the next you know, four years, their house is not in order. How do they intend to do this if they cannot Co conduct a, a simple Congress. No, but you see, a Congress is not something um, this, you sit in one place and throw uh, at the state. Ordinarily, the state will decide when it's convenient for them to do a Congress and then they tell the national. So the national will now send people to come and supervise the Congress. But you see, what is happening now in reverse is dictatorship. And that is where Magnus is saying, I do not agree. You don't just wake up from sleep and say, we're having Congress tomorrow. The words need to be mobilized. They need to understand what's going on. The LGS need to understand. The state escorts need to understand. So it is very, very pertinent that all stakeholders in the state must sit down and agree. Talking about agreement, if we're talking about stakeholders sitting down and agreeing, we already know that there's a crack and a faction is like literally a Caesars was put through the cloth of the APC in River State and, you know, cut in half. I remember Plus TV Africa covered the presidential campaign of the APC in River State. And Magnus Abbey was in the crowd, but he was not allowed to sit on the platform. I remember I asked that question to Tony Cole, who was supposedly the governorship candidate at the time. I also asked that question to several other people I interviewed, and they said, oh, it was an oversight. But he wasn't also recognized that day during... So there is bad blood. We all know this. But do you think the APC can ever forgive a Magnus Abbey? for what he has done in the party. Because they're short of, what is left for them to do is expel him from the party. But then they have not done that. Like you said, there's a communication problem. No, nobody knew that there was going to be a Congress and now all of a sudden there's a Congress and so they go to court. So do you think that that blood, that bad blood can ever be forgiven? You see, so long as Magnus Ebe has not been suspended, and he has not been expelled from the party, he's a bona fide member of that party. Mm -hmm. He has a voice, and his voice must be listened to. But the, only thing but, that that, takes, but that voice seems 
not to let nothing happen within no. the party. You see, this is where the national chairman of the party needs to come and apply wisdom. A house divided amongst itself cannot win an election anywhere. So I expect that Adam Sushimole should be able to do that. He should be able to call this. These are two leaders. He should be able to call them on a round table and say, good, what is this? We've gone through this. Let us forget whatever has happened and put our house together. But saying that you will not do that is the same reason why everybody in Nigeria today is calling for restructuring. Because nobody's sitting down to talk to anybody. People are saying, we're not happy. Children are saying, you're not feeding us. We're hungry. And the father is saying, no, you must go to the farm. Obviously, that, that farm would not yield any result. But the APC, whether they say it or not, I mean, there's several times that the APC has come out to say that there are no problems in the party, that it's the opposition that's trying to make it look that way. But we all know that there are problems. There was a problem in Oshun State. There's a problem in Edo State, as we speak. There's rivers. There are problems everywhere. So if the national is not taking this as serious as they should and not take sides, is this also going to affect the roots of the APC? Because the national APC cannot be strong if the states are not strong enough, I, right? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want to start um, making prophetic utterances. But I'll say well, you're this. You're not a prophet, so yes, you can't. But I'll say this, that um, after the next three years or four years of this government, I am not sure APC would still be the same APC we know. But they, you see, they say that people like you are naysayers and you do not want, that you do not want the life of the party. The, no, to... no, no, no. I, 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 no, 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 you're getting it wrong. The point is, a lot of things have gone wrong in APC. And they are pretending that But the APC is, is saying there. that there is nothing wrong in their party. No, I mean, we, we, we are the people. We are, we, we are the ones that are going to be voting. We are the ones that are going to be, you know, talking to people to vote. We are seeing these things. The people also are seeing it. So it's not like it's not like something that oh only me I'm the only one seeing it. No, everybody knows that there's a crack. In the next two years, you will see alignments will be formed. It's it's, it's I feel so bad that after the this election, this supposedly thought force has disappeared. That is the unfortunate Was thing there about Nigerian politics. Was there a third force in, to start with? Did it even kick off in the first instance? I know. I would respect to everybody who tried to sign up to it. Did it really kick off? Did it fulfill the purpose for which it was even called a third force in the first instance? It didn't, but we expect. I expect, because I know the, I know, I know the parties involved, some of them personally, and we've been telling them, this is the time to sit down and begin to plan for tomorrow and begin to say, good. You see, the problem here is that everybody is a presidential material. But everybody cannot be elected and everybody cannot be a leader. Only one person at a point in time must be a leader. But you see, that's a problem with all the political parties in Nigeria. We saw the drama with the SDP that cost Donald Duke an opportunity for presidency. It also cost, um, we saw, in the most it cost his own problem for Casey. Exactly. So uh, the, everybody, yes, wants to be a certain thing. So I don't understand if people go into these alliances and not understand the manifesto of the party, the rules and the regulations, or is it the way we play politics in Nigeria? We need to, we need to throw away greed from our political life. We, 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 we are laying so much emphasis on money, acquiring wealth, looting the treasury. And that is why I still have problem with this constitution. A constitution that protects a thief is not a worthwhile constitution. Well, everybody is presumed innocent, innocent until, until proven, proven guilty. guilty. But when it is glaring, you can't hide from it. We can't keep having leaders who come to power, we're asking them, declare your assets. Nobody wants, it's like you're singing to the wind. And then you see somebody who tells you, I borrowed 
25 million. I borrowed 5 million to buy the farm. Suddenly, he leaves government. He is, boom, the richest man. I tell you, if governance becomes uninteresting today, a lot of people Who's going to make that happen? We hope that, we hope that this um, president, we hope, we hope... The president that, doesn't yes. have the powers to do so. We, no. The uh, National uh, Assembly... Do you is, have a National Assembly right now? Well, we do have a National Assembly, and they're the ones who pass those bills into law. Yes, we can lobby. Yes, now, we can is, push this those is, bills. Um, but how many, how many if the governors have said that... Going to, I asked this question earlier on. If it is not going to benefit the average politician who is our legislator, who is our local government chairman, who is our state legislator, who is our president, why would they want to push do, it? Do you, do you also take into consideration that, that, it's just a that the election question. will come and people would refuse to go out and vote? People would prefer to sit at home. It will get to that. So, it's not, you see, we need to understand that the number of people who are holding this country down, they're not even up to 20,000. They're not. And I have always said to people, leave the presidency. Face your governor. Face your local government chairman. When we do that, a lot of things will change. When a governor knows that his people will demand for accountability, a lot of things will change. But everybody is so carried away with, oh, Mr. President, it's the pre And then you forget that your governor gets an allocation every month. What does he do with the money? So these are issues that we all need to look at. So for me, I keep saying that accountability starts with our representatives. Okay, all right. In recent times, nobody has talked about the cars of the senators. We are still watching. We are waiting for them. A country where 30,000 naira cannot be paid to civil servants, and you're budgeting 50 million to buy a car for one person? Is that no waste? Well, this is Nigeria. I want to thank you, Francis, for uh, being part of the conversation. Francis Chilaka is a political analyst. Thank you so much for being here. Well, our plus report is on the crisis in the Federal University of Oye in Ekiti over the killing of two students by the police. Let's take a look. And when we come back, it'll be time for my take. The First Lady Erelu Bisifayemi was inside the Civic Center when the whole saga was ongoing. We are not aware of any shooting order, of any shooting order by anybody, neither was there any time the executives or students saw First Lady of Ekiti State when she came and when she left. Well, in our opinion, she was also a victim of the brutality and unscrupulous attitude of the police officers and especially the CTU officials. This crisis and the unfortunate killing of our comrade was the irresponsible acts and negligence of these police officers, especially the CTU officials. We do not want any distraction or any misinformation or festing on our sorrow. On this note, we state our demand strongly. The prosecution of the police officers and the CTU officials involved in the murderous and shameful act in accordance to the rule of law, so as to serve as atonement of the dead. Two, the compensation of the families of the deceased students and the payment of the hospital charges for those that are receiving treatment. Three, the agitation for stable electricity and provision of transformers in Oya campus and the Kole campus for prompt usage by students must be resolved as a master of necessity and exigency. Four, the immediate and unconditional restoration of student union activities in four years. It's time for my take. This is my favorite part of the show. So, first things first. A Nigerian professor is saying that if Nigeria does not adopt restructuring and deal with the deep-seated problems that we have and stop glossing over it, 
we may never really have a Nigeria to talk about in a few years down the line. But who wants that? So, well, if you do not want that, what are you doing in holding that local government chairman accountable or responsible? What are you doing in asking your member representing you at your local assembly to give account of what he's done? What are you doing about that representative or senator who says he's representing you but is fighting for a 50 million naira vehicle when your mother or father or you yourself has not been able to get them to pay the average minimum wage, which is 30,000. When are we going to make these people accountable? So much so that the people will be prioritized over any other thing. Talk less of hardship allowances and newspaper allowances, which are their priorities. I always say this, and I'm going to keep saying it, and I'm going to, I don't mind sounding like a broken record. We are the problem. We are part of the problem. We cannot let a handful of people determine how our lives can go or keep making life difficult for us when we have the power. Isn't that what a democracy is? Power to the people. Yes, us. Democracy, it's, it's a government of the people, by the people, for the people. If we do not realize how much power we wield, we'll keep being more like a yo-yo in the hands of these politicians. The power is yours. You make that change today. I am Mary Annacle. It's been Plus Politics.